Now, there's many people that believe that they're going to basically get control of the commerce. They're going to overthrow the evil that's controlling the commerce. They tend to think that there's a good side and a bad side going on right now in the United States. Um, but I kind of compare the United States as actually like a very unfaithful nation of Israel. They claim that they were supposed to be following the Bible or the principles of the Bible on how they formatted what they were uh, going to uh, basically adhere to as rules that they and guidelines that they would uh, follow uh, for the people. But we have to understand, too, that we know there's many people in the United States that certainly have no belief in God, nor do they have any belief uh, in anything to do with moral principles or behavior. So uh, we know that that could never, it could never be the case the United States is definitely a nation under God. Maybe on the premise they're trying to do that, but as a, an example, a parable, uh, they look like they were at least somewhat in the semblance trying to follow the Bible. But now, who knows what they're going to do now, because anything goes as it does in legal all the time. You can legalize anything. Any abhorrent act can be legalized. And now it becomes acceptable. Whether it be homosexuality, whether it be uh, uh, basically abortion, um, these are things that are condemned in the Bible, and that's up to the conscience of the listeners right now what I'm talking about. I'm talking from a individual that I am right now as not a member of any nation of man. I am under the sovereignty of Jesus Christ, and I accepted that. So on the day that I was baptized into that kingdom by water baptism, I accepted Jesus Christ as my king, not Donald Trump or a prime minister or anybody from any of these secular nations. And therefore, I walk forward on that. But we have to remember the money belongs to Caesar. Jesus was clear about that. And therefore, anything that represents money or monetary activity belongs to Caesar. Debt is money and is the tax. And of course, they had to create a taxable name assigned to you in order to track you for this type of behavior. And therefore, by consent, we use it if we're engaged in it and therefore, Caesar has the right to collect. And because he basically is in control of it and creates this artificial person, he's able to destroy that artificial person because he is given that power because God allows it. He didn't say to become part of it. He didn't say to participate in it. So we have to be clear on render unto Caesar what is Caesar. The only thing that belongs to Caesar is someone saying that they're a member in the legal position of the positive law, operating an assignment legal surname, and on top of that, engaging in the commerce as their master. They're serving that. We cannot say that we're a Canadian, an American, or an Australian and say that we're a Christian at the same time. Yes, these nations allow you to think you believe or will allow you to think you believe in Jesus Christ or God, but they are over and above that in law with the use of the surname. And that's why surname is a blasphemous terminology because a surname is defined in the law books in blacks uh, forth as name over and above the Christian name. They just said it's superior to Jesus Christ, and that's why the early Christians would go to their death before incorporating their God-given name in Jesus Christ, their Christian name, into the Roman pagan state. All the Roman pagan state temples were exempt from tax based on the fact that they complied with the Roman legal system and its use of the money the early christians were leaving they were not going in and they were not as we see christianity today money changing in their participants temples so are you truly following god or are you going to be part of something that not only god can destroy but also man will destroy be in fear if you can destroy both 
not only the legal body corporate of man, but also your spirit. Because he can take both away. And this is where knowledge begins, as it says in Proverbs, knowing that it begins with the fear of God. Knowing that you ultimately do not want to displease your creator.